I believe that a person's uh, moral compass can be determined by how he references free men the right to defend themselves. Ted Nugent, often dubbed the Motor City Madman, is a rock music legend known for his fierce guitar skills and outspoken personality. Born December 13, 1948 in Detroit, Nugent rose to prominence in the 1970s with his band, the Amboy Dukes, before launching a successful solo career. Nugent's music is characterized by its high-energy rock sound, blending elements of hard rock, blues, and psychedelia. Hits like Cat Scratch Fever and Stranglehold have solidified his status as a rock icon. He's also known for his passionate advocacy of conservative political views, particularly regarding gun rights and hunting. His outspoken nature has often stirred controversy, making him a polarizing figure in both the music and political worlds. Ted's life and career. Ted Nugent's life and career have been defined by his electrifying guitar playing, larger-than-life personality, and unwavering dedication to rock music. His musical journey began in the 1960s when he formed his first band, The Lords, and they later evolved into the Amboy Dukes. With the Amboy Dukes, he gained attention for his innovative guitar work and the band's psychedelic rock sound. Their 1968 debut album, The Amboy Dukes, featured the hit single, Journey to the Center of the Mind. This catapulted them into the mainstream. In 1975, Nugent embarked on a solo career, releasing his self-titled debut album, Ted Nugent. The album featured the classic rock anthem, Stranglehold, which showcased Nugent's formidable guitar skills and cemented his reputation as a guitar virtuoso. The success of Ted Nugent laid the foundation for a string of successful solo albums throughout the 70s and 80s, including Free For All, Cat Scratch Fever, and Weekend Warriors. Cat Scratch Fever in particular became Nugent's most commercially successful album, spawning the hit singles Cat Scratch Fever and Wang Dang Sweet Poontang. The album's title track remains one of Nugent's signature songs. Throughout his career, his live performances have been legendary for their energy and intensity. He's known for his wild stage antics, including his trademark guitar solos performed while standing on amplifiers or speakers. His live albums, such as Double Live Gonzo in 1978, capture the raw power and excitement of his live shows, earning him a reputation as one of rock music's most electrifying performers. In addition to his solo work, Nugent has also collaborated with other artists and bands over the years. He's contributed guitar work to albums by artists like Meatloaf, Sammy Hagar, and Damn Yankees, a supergroup he formed in the late 80s, with Jack Blades, Tommy Shaw, and Michael Cardalone. Nugent's impact on the world of rock music extends beyond his own recordings. His influence can be heard in the work of countless guitarists, inspired by his blistering solos and fearless approach to playing. He's often cited as an influence by musicians ranging from Slash to Dave Grohl. Despite the passage of time, he continues to record and tour relentlessly maintaining a rigorous schedule that would exhaust musicians half his age. His most recent albums, like Shut Up and Jam in 2014 and The Music Made Me Do It in 2018, showcase his enduring passion for rock music and refusal to compromise his artistic vision. He's also an avid outdoorsman and hunting enthusiast. He's written several books on hunting and conservation and has hosted his own television show, Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild, which chronicles his adventures in the wilderness. He was inducted into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005. Ted's Loose Tongue Pay attention, I never watched a newscast in my life, but I was given a draft notice and I went down. I went down, I had my draft physical, and I passed with flying cover, colors. And I got a draft card in the mail a couple months later uh, through my mom and dad's house. Ted has found himself embroiled in numerous controversies over his career. Let's delve into some of them. Gun Control Advocacy Nugent is a vocal advocate for gun rights and has frequently spoken out against gun control measures. He staunchly supports the Second Amendment and has also been a prominent figure in the NRA. Nugent believes in the right of individuals to own and carry firearms for self-defense and recreation. Inflammatory remarks against President Obama. Nugent's criticism of political figures, particularly former President Barack Obama, has often crossed into inflammatory territory. He's made derogatory and racially charged remarks about Obama, 
referring to him as a subhuman mongrel and a chimpanzee. These comments sparked outrage and condemnation from many quarters, with critics accusing Nugent of racism and bigotry. Displeasure about the end of apartheid in South Africa In the past, Nugent expressed displeasure about the end of apartheid in South Africa, arguing it would lead to chaos and violence. He also stated that, quote, not all men are created equal, and suggested that the natives were better off being ruled under the racist regime. His comments were widely criticized as insensitive and out of touch with the struggle for racial equality and justice in South Africa. Belief that animals have no rights as an avid hunter and outdoorsman, Nugent has often stirred controversy with his views on animal rights. He believes animals do not have rights and that hunting is a natural and necessary part of conservation. Nugent's outspoken defense of hunting and his participation in trophy hunting expeditions have drawn condemnation from animal rights activists who argue for more humane treatment of animals and stricter regulations on hunting practices. Remarks about the survivors of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. Following the tragic shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, Nugent made disparaging remarks about the survivors who spoke out in favor of gun control. He called them liars and accused them of exploiting the tragedy for political gain. Nugent's comments drew widespread condemnation, with many criticizing him for attacking young survivors who had experienced a traumatizing event. Ted gets a visit. He's the president in November again. I will either be dead or in jail by this time next year. These comments immediately drew condemnation from across the political spectrum, with many interpreting them as a veiled threat against the president. The Secret Service, tasked with protecting the president and investigating threats against the office, took notice and launched an investigation into Nugent's remarks. While Nugent later clarified that his comments were not meant as a threat of violence, but rather as a statement of his strong opposition to Obama's policies, the damage had been done. The incident reignited the ongoing debate over the limits of free speech, particularly in the context of political discourse. While Nugent's supporters defended his right to express his opinions, critics argued that his comments crossed the line by appearing to endorse violence against the president. In the end, the Secret Service concluded Nugent's comments did not constitute a credible threat against the president and no charges were filed. Nugent himself acknowledged the need to choose his words more carefully in the future. Despite the controversy, Nugent's career continued largely unabated. He has remained a popular figure in conservative circles, known for his outspoken advocacy of gun rights, hunting, and limited government. But the incident undoubtedly left a mark on his reputation and served as a reminder of the potential consequences of crossing the line between passionate expression and incitement to violence. While Nugent's remarks were ultimately deemed not to constitute a credible threat, the incident did serve as a reminder of the importance of responsible communication, particularly with public figures that have large platforms. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you agree with any of Ted Nugent's views? Let us know in the comments section below.